So for me, it's a, it's a way of connecting with people, but it's also a way of finding new perspectives on technology and, and running the agency and, and the business in general. I guess you have the same mindset as we have, like standing still is going backwards. Exactly. Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Woo Agency Chat, part of the Do The Woo Network. Today's show is brought to you by GoDaddy. Whether you're just starting to build that Woo shop for a client or looking to expand or scale an existing site, GoDaddy's e-commerce hosting solution is there for you and your projects. I'll tell you more about GoDaddy later in the show, but we return with one of our Woo agency chats this time with Nils Frederick from Maximer and Alex Friesen from Imside. Their conversation takes us across attending WordCamps, managing client expectations, partnerships and collaboration, the Woo Expert Program, and ending with some excellent agency tips. Let's join Nils and Alex for our conversation. Welcome to Do The Woo's Agency Chat. I am Nils Fredrik from the agency Maximer, and I have with me Alex Frison from Impside today. Would you like to introduce yourself, Alex? Hey, Nicholas Frederick. Nice to talk to you today. And I'm Alex Friedon. I'm CEO and co-owner at Imsight. I live in the northwest part of Germany in a small town called uh, Damme. And yeah, I'm happily married with my uh, wife, Julia, having two kids, two and a half old uh, son and a daughter. Um, she will turn uh, five next week. So um, big thing to celebrate. And uh, I was uh, abroad for eight years two years in Seville in Spain, uh, four years in Tele Dallas, Texas, and then also two years in Amsterdam on a houseboat. And uh, when I came back to Germany, I joined Imside, and I guess the rest is history. You spent two years on a houseboat? Two years on a houseboat, yeah, in Amsterdam. That was cool. It was really fun, you know, uh, having breakfast with uh, some ducks and, uh, you know, living in the middle of the city, but you have the peace of the river. And uh, that was pretty kind of like a oasis in the busy city. Sounds amazing. My name is uh, Nils Fredrik Winter Kaland. Many people in the WordPress community just call me uh, Nils, but my friends, they call me Nils Fredrik. So my name is Nils Fredrik. That's what my mom calls me at least. <laughs> so I have uh, four kids uh, ranging from seven to 17 and a wife. And I live in a small town called Brina on the west coast of, of Norway. Brina is today, I think. What, you heard of Brina? Yeah, of course. Is not Haaland uh, from there? Exactly, exactly. The football player Erling Braut Haaland, yeah. Not bad, not bad. But I guess you don't have this kind of talent, right? No, uh, sorry, I don't, unfortunately. <laughs> hopefully, man. Hopefully one of the kids will. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Interesting. Um, I started out programming in 1994, when I read about HTML in a magazine, and uh, I built a lot of fan sites for football players. Do you remember Eric Cantona? Of course. Yeah, he was say was my guy. Uh, so I started uh, coding then, and I think quite early I decided that I wanted to run an agency at some point. I wanted to to build my own business and find my own path in life. So uh, after high school, instead of going to university, I started working in an agency actually applied for a job before I was uh, finished in high school and I got a job. Um, after some time, I actually understood that the reason I got a job was because the guy who hired me, he knew even less than I did. Nice. <laughs> yeah. But that was, uh, yeah, it was, I had 10 years, uh, 10 years there. And, uh, but I always knew that I wanted to do something uh, on my own. And at some point there, I found a uh, partner that I want to start Maximer together with. And for nearly 15 years ago now, we started uh, Maximer. And as you said, the rest is history. Yeah, The rest is history. It's funny that you're saying like, you know, your old boss uh, didn't know or did less know than you did. But, you know, I think as a CEO, um, my only job is to hire people that are better than me. Yes. So maybe that was also like his approach. Might be, might be. Was, uh, I learned a lot. I definitely learned a lot. So, um, yeah. But uh, where did we meet the first time, uh, Alex? We've known each other for a few years now. Uh, we usually meet on many WordCamps all around the world, like uh, Asia, US, 
uh, Europe. But I think the first time was at Atlanta in 2017 when we met all the WooCommerce experts back in the days. That was really nice. That was really cool. Yeah, it was very a very nice uh, event. But WordCamps. WordCamps. That is kind of the main place we meet and we meet other people. What, what is your main goal for attending WordCamps? Um, yeah, of course, meeting new people, meeting old friends, um, get, you know, a glimpse of what's coming up, uh, what changes are there, exchanging, collaboration. Um, it is kind of like a family reunion, if, if you would say, you know, like my first WordCamp was in uh, 2008 in Dallas. That was actually the, yeah, that was actually the second WordCamp ever. Uh, back in the days, Matt was pretty young at this time, and uh, it was a small group. And uh, yeah, it was just a bunch of WordPress freaks sitting in a Tex-Mex chain restaurant with everybody together and uh, eating some burritos and uh, talking about WordPress and uh, dreamed about how we can conquer the world with WordPress. That was before Inside, right? So That was before Inside, yeah. That was the time when I was uh, still in, in Dallas, uh, worked there as a web developer. And um, yeah, I knew the people from uh, Inside before that. Um, and we had also like a lot of contact. But, you know, since I was living in the US and they were in Germany, um, there was not like, you know, uh, a yeah, working connection on that one. I mean, uh, Inside was founded in 2006 by eight people. And back then, that was more or less uh, actually the WordPress community in Germany. So um, they started to translate uh, WordPress into German. And uh, um, they always tell, like, um, when a release came out um, in English, uh, they worked the whole night. And so the German version uh, was available on the very next morning. So um, everything was very, you know, like uh, very fast. And... Um, Back also, you know, when I also joined, we also organized or started to organize WordPress events in Germany. And I remember also like in 2010 when I joined, um, Inside Matt was also um, visiting uh, one of the events and that was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, but later on we handed uh, over the translation and the community uh, to the community and also like the organization of WordCamps in Germany. So, um, you know, we we gave over all the the duties uh, to the community and we focus more like, on, on our agency work. And um, yeah, I mean, meanwhile, we also grew quite a bit. I mean, from eight people, um, I think in 2012, we were 12 people, around 12 people and 16. That was, uh, we had our first employee not from Germany and he's still with us. I'm very happy about it. And uh, by 2019, when we had our WordCamp, uh, you know, there was a WordCamp Europe in Berlin, we had around 35 people. And uh, now we are almost 140 people. So I'm all over the world and um, with 47 different nations. And um, yeah, and we are, we are working from the very beginning always uh, remote. And we don't have any offices or headquarters or anything like that. And no offices anywhere. No offices. I mean, sometimes a client was asking like, hey, can we visit your headquarter and uh, talk about this and that? And I'm always telling like, hey, you can come to my partner Heinz and have a coffee in, in his living room. That's about it, you know. <laughs> but if you like, you can come, you know. So there's no office. Yeah. And But we also like next month, um, we are going to meet all together on Madeira to have a great week of collaboration and fun, you know, like once a year we try to um, get everybody together and um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it and uh, excited to see all of them in person. And uh, some some of them I will see also like the first time. I didn't see them before. Um, um, yeah. And uh, especially like when we had Corona, we had several people, they were working for us since like three years. I never seen them in person before, you know, until last we were in Barcelona. So that was amazing. And uh, we all, everybody is looking forward for um, in the two weeks uh, we have ahead of us. Um, to celebrate, yeah, um, our accomplishments and also like having just fun and activities together on Madeira. That'd be nice. I'm pretty sure it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Back to back to world camps. I think for my sake, it's it's a bit like you say. You it's like a, it's like meeting the family. It's a family reunion every time. Uh, you meet a lot of people you you know and you look forward to meeting them again. But there's always a lot of new people uh, you meet, and I. I don't know how what you do, but 
I usually have a look at the speakers list and the attendees list and I see if there's someone with some special topic or something that I'm particularly interested in or some person that I find find of interest. And I uh, I try to find and reach out to them during the event to establish new contacts. And um, that's like every time there is someone new coming in that brings something interesting and a new inspir- inspiration or a new motivation for how to to um, how, how can we change our agency? How can we work smarter? What's the next uh, next thing we should uh, should look at and do? So 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 for me, it's 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 kind of a it's a it's a way of connecting with people, uh, but it's also a way of finding perspective, new perspectives on technology and, and running the agency and um, and the business in general. I guess you have the same mindset as we have. Like standing still is going backwards. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So looking for new possibilities, or collaborations, um, opportunities. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I'm also checking, you know, who's speaking and what's the agenda, but I barely visit those um, talks. Um, most of the time I have talks on the the floor um, and uh, hallway. Um, this is hallway track. Yeah, the hallway track. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this is very, very efficient and it's it's fun. It's great. And sometimes you also uh, meet people um, coincidentally, and uh, yeah, it's and we we do have also like many you know I would say appointments or um, you know with uh, people we know or other uh, companies way ahead of the conference. So um, I wouldn't say I'm bored, you know, um, but uh, yeah, but it's also like there's no expectation or a certain expectations. Just like oh, let's let's have fun and. Um, um, let's see what's coming up. By the end of the this session, we have decided to come up with uh, a few tips that we would give to other either smaller agency owners that would like to to grow their agency. And and one of the things is I've added to my list is about WordCamps. So we can can come back to that one. But what's the uh, when you when you go to a WordCamp? It's like a lot of people got COVID in in uh, WordCamp US uh, last last month. How do you uh, how 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 are how are your weeks after the World Cup? Um, personally, I was a little bit exhausted, but uh, it was all right. Um, we do had uh, two colleagues; they had COVID, and uh, it was just more than exhausted. So that was a pity. But uh, <clears throat> I guess that happens on every bigger event uh, you attend nowadays. I mean, what can you do? For example, I, I was mentioning like we will meet in uh, two weeks um, on Madeira with our whole team. Um, you know, we also ask everybody to have a test before they travel. And then, of course, we will have tests uh, there at the premises. And uh, also we provide masks. If somebody feels uncomfortable, I would like to have a mask. Then, of course, they can wear them. Uh, that's not a problem at all. Um, otherwise, yeah, how do how do you want to avoid it? You know, you can, I mean, otherwise you can just stay at home and do nothing and uh, and be a remote working uh, digitally and this is ex- exactly what we don't want exactly. for example the next two weeks and also like on word camps this is like the difference you know like uh, having video calls and conferences or whatever uh, via zoom or me uh, teams um, is completely different and um, this is special and uh, that's also why i like to travel to those kind of um, you know events and uh, love to meet people in person but of course you do have the risk. You do also have the risk like something happens, you know, your plane crashed, you have a car accident on the way to the event. It can happen. Of course, you know, um, nowadays maybe the risk of COVID is a little bit less, you know, because of medication or whatsoever. But, um, yeah, what will you say? Back in the days, I was always saying like no risk, no fun. Exactly. No, I say, I say the same. And I think the being exhausted is, is probably because both you and me like... <coughs> Can we say staying out late while at work camps? A little bit, you know. I think it's it's partly like staying late, but also getting old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about old, you know. Uh, do you remember? Do you know Mary Falker from uh, the Wu Expert Program? Yeah, yeah. Of course. You know what she called us the last uh, in in Washington? Yeah, yeah. The OGs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, native english speaking so i had to actually check the ods to, to see what, what it means 
it, it actually, I, I thought she meant the old guys, but actually it means uh, it shows like the original gangsters, the guys who's been around for a while. Yeah, I don't know what she really meant, but <laughs> let's take the original gangsters or something. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even though like the old uh, guys, uh, you know, it is what it is, you know. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. And I see some of the profile, profile pictures. Bob used uh, for this show as well was uh, I would say uh, that was nice, very polite of him. Yeah, yeah, he he did it. he did good. He did good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, we have a new topic. I think should we talk a bit more about the agencies? Yeah. I mean, what are your specialties? Where are you into? Short backstory about the agency. How would kind of the the uh, the main motivation for uh, for how we. Why we, we did what we did. So the, the name Maxima translates to maximize. That means to maximize conversion rates. And there are mainly two drivers for, for conversion rate uh, maximizing. And that is to build a great site of high quality and to drive traffic to your site from relevant traffic sources that are looking for your products. So that's basically what we try to do. We try to build great sites and get relevant visitors to the sites. And then we make the sites even better by working with zero or conversion rate optimization. Of course, you know, the sales pitch and the real world might be some deviations here, but uh, that's, the, that's the idea. So for the first few years, we did, we did this for, for quite a lot and we were uh, really good. But what happened was that we hired more people and we got new projects and we hired more people and we got even more projects and we just kept on going like that. And after a few years, we had a very smooth and good delivery team uh, and business was good. But on that journey, I mean, I think we were around 30 or 40 employees. The idea uh, had, the main idea had gradually faded and we did little or no traffic acquisition work. We did little or no SEO and SEM any longer, and we did little or no CRO work. And we were considered a more traditional web agency. And if we go like four or five years back, I think we had 70% of our business was doing new projects and new builds. And what we have now spent the last few years doing is to turn this around again and work more long-term with our clients to have and so, yeah, in, yeah, uh, we, we are doing, now we are having a dedicated SEO team, people working with uh, Google Ads and, and performance marketing. We have, a, a, we have people working with Zero within the team for our clients. And we have actually also turned around the whole business now. And we have, instead of 70% on new builds, we now have 70% of our business on uh, retainers or existing clients, which is feels quite good and, and quite safe. And one of the best things I think we have, have done through the last uh, during the last few years is to set up a new team. Um, I w- it was actually it came out of the the business the needs we saw that our clients side. They at, in many ca- occasions we we saw that our clients did not have the experience or the necessary competence to buy our services. They did not know, basically, or they were unexperienced buyers of our services. And we also saw that a lot of our clients did not have the necessary experience to run and take out the potential in their e-commerce sites. So what we did was we actually hired people who had been running their own e-commerce sites, and, and, uh, and, and they, worked, they worked for us as advisors and e-commerce managers on our side. And that has also been a very, very good asset to, to us. Then we have people who really understand the business needs and the struggles of the merchants. And uh, yeah, all of this has really, really turned our business uh, from being good to, to being, uh, I would say, uh, even better. Uh, and then and we are no longer just focusing on new builds and, and projects. We have a lot of ongoing work for existing clients. So uh, yeah. It's a multidisciplinary team working with uh, all disciplines of, of kind of what need, what's needed to run an e-commerce site today. Okay, that sounds really interesting. I mean, it's also like uh, sustainable if you have 
uh, you know, yearly income by the same, you know, clients and all this stuff. I see you also put a lot of thought of your uh, name back in the days. Um, you know, Imsight, it is old Greek and means inspiration. Mm. I always say to the people it's not true. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, like as you, your reaction, mm, you know, that's the same reaction of many other people. But I always tell the true story. It's like, uh, you know, um, two of our founders, they like the, you know, um, psychedelic music. And then they were looking for domains and it uh, looks like Inside was available. And so <laughs> this was a reason of the name, Inside. But, uh, you know, um, it is what it is. And, uh, and we do also see like many people have struggled or uh, struggling, uh, you know, pronounce it right. But, you know. Uh, at least they can remember it, and yeah, you know, I think they can also remember the green color. I mean, uh, we we running around with green color, and uh, this is our um, yeah, uh, I would say a mark. Uh, you know, so how people remember us. Yeah, and uh, it's also easy to spot our colleagues. Like you, you know, like there's a big hall, many hundred hundred of hundred people, and you see like a green spot. Like oh, there's my colleague. That's great. I'm going there. So it's really yeah. Nice. Yeah. When we went for breakfast um, um, in Washington the last the last morning, I didn't recognize you because you wear a gray hoodie instead of a green one. So yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm running around incognito. <laughs> <laughs> incognito, yeah. But yeah, normally you can always find me in green. Yeah, but you also asked about the kind of projects uh, we do. Mm -hmm. I can say a few things about that because we we are doing e-commerce projects only. And what we have, I think, built our business on is the integration to third-party systems like ERP, POS, PIM solutions. Um, so, and the business, uh, the leads we get is all very often related to the clients having a need to build an e-commerce site on top of something they already have running, have some kind of business system. So um, we do a lot of uh, heavy, uh, more or less heavy uh, integrations to ERP systems and business systems and CRM systems and whatever. And uh, that's 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 the kind of projects we do. And it's both B2B and B2C. How about you? We are a little bit different. You know, we started quite a while ago. So uh, way before uh, WooCommerce did even exist. So, um, you know, we are specialized more on complex and enterprise projects all over the world and especially if there's like a multi-site or multi-language uh, involved uh, with our multilingual press uh, plugin um, but also connect uh, WordPress to third-party systems um, you know is one of our specialty especially like uh, on WooCommerce um, migrating websites from Core Media or Sitecore or Adobe or any other uh, proprietary solution is also like our specialty of insight and um, you know it's also fun you know to uh, have another big company uh, on the WordPress site you know and uh, show like hey uh, what is possible with WordPress you know more and more companies see the vast advantages and also possibilities of WordPress and um, you know no nowadays many deciding to switch to WordPress with their main website and not only using WordPress just as a blog or landing page or anything mm. like this. and uh, they do see all, um, also like the vast of, you know, money they can save instead of investing in uh, licenses, they, you know, start from day one investing in the development. So this is a big difference. Yeah. But, um, you know, as, as you say, like, you know, you're only on uh, WooCommerce and we started way before. Um, you know, we have watched uh, the evolution of WooCommerce before it even became WooCommerce. <clears throat> The base of WooCommerce uh, solution is actually from uh, the UK by a small agency who called their solution Jiku Shop, and uh, we really liked the, this new approach. You know, like uh, the technical solution was pretty good uh, for the first steps uh, back in the days, and since it was all, all open source, Woo picked up the idea and evolved it even more, uh, which is uh, now known as WooCommerce. You know, so. That is, you know, what open source make make possible, you know, that you can pick up ideas and say like, hey, you know, we can do something even better, you know. So um, we know uh, the previous solution, which is uh, where WooCommerce is based on, and uh, we know the 
whole involvement of uh, WooCommerce back in the days. It was quite a story. It is quite a story. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you would never thought like, hey, they have like, I don't know, 40% of market share now. Um, it's it's crazy. You know, it's great. And uh, it was kind of like, I think, uh, an obvious step that WooCommerce is part of uh, automatic, you know. And um, yeah, it was a smart step as well. So yeah, you you mentioned you do some replatforming from Sidecore and Adobe. Was it, is that mainly for the CMS part, or do you do a lot of replatforming for e-commerce as well? Uh, mostly WordPress, but you know, of course, you know, people are not very happy sometimes with Magento, for example, or other things. Or also, like they say, um, we're growing out of um, some smaller solutions, and uh, we need to change. It's getting more and more, let's say this, um, you know, um, we, we get more and more requests uh, regarding those kind of uh, migrations. And uh, yeah, it's also interesting. It's uh, challenging, uh, but it's more and more the request. Yeah. I think it's also, we, we see that most of the new builds we do or the products we do, people are moving from one platform to uh, Google. It's it's very rare that uh, the website didn't even exist before, or we wouldn't have something really completely new. I mean, um, you know, internet exists twenty years now, uh, and most of the people they have, especially on the enterprise level or mid size level, they already have a website. And but they always f try to find some new um, technologies, you know, and uh, yeah. So and uh, happily, many of them they decide to go to WordPress. We are happy with that. Whether you're just starting to build that Woo shop for a client or looking to expand or scale an existing site, GoDaddy's e-commerce hosting solution is there for you and your projects. Expand a client store with access to thousands of extensions or scale big time with conversion tools, multiple staff accounts, an integrated POS, marketplace integrations, and discounted shipping rates plus a lot more. And if you continue to manage your site or you hand it over to the client, a single dashboard gives powerful tools such as online sales tracking and easy auto sync for all the store's inventory across the entire site. Plus software, plugins, and extensions will be kept up to date and regression and other testing is done continually to avoid site breakage. With that all said, keep your client sites humming along with e-commerce hosting from GoDaddy at godaddy.com. Back to the, to the agency, I would like to just uh, touch into kind of having partners. So you mentioned you, you were not one of the initial founders of Hemside, but tell me, you, how do you work together with your partners today and how do you in the partnership managed to kind of drive inside forward and how are the decision-making progress the processes for you and yeah i mean um you know we i do have uh, three partners they were uh, one of the founders and uh, we get uh, along very well because also you know uh, personal wise i mean we are friends and uh, everybody has also like their specific expertise and uh, part of the company for example i'm running uh, the daily business sales and marketing with a great team together and then um, one of them is taking care of the finance uh, another one is more taking care of the technical solutions and where we go and uh, the last one is robert many people in the wordpress uh, woocommerce um, community know him and he's taking care of the business operation and the community i mean i think you know he would be most probably one of the top 10 uh, you know people uh, who visit most uh, WordCamps ever. <laughs> I don't know how many he visit. Um, I'm pretty sure more than 100 at least. A year? No, not a year, but in total. <laughs> I mean, you know, WordCamp uh, US was, um, when was it, uh, four weeks ago, six weeks ago? Yeah. yeah. Um, since then, he visited already three other WordCamps. <laughs> so it could have been 100 a year, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's always on uh, in the train or on the plane or whatever he's always uh, going <laughs> yeah my colleague Slobodan met him in in Amsterdam I think so uh, yeah ah yeah right he was uh, in in the Netherlands working in the Netherlands right now recently correct 
yeah, now when he's traveling all around the world. So I guess if you have been at a WordCamp or, uh, you know, WooCommerce event, um, you certainly saw a person with a hat, green shirt, that's Robert. That's Robert, yeah. I started out also, Maximil, together with a partner, Anders, Anders Meyer, and um, we are still both uh, very central and active in the company. But we, we I, think, I think it was like six or seven years ago, we decided that we needed some, some uh, outside input, external input. And we also brought in an external uh, partner in the company then, who is not actively working in the, in the business, but who has been, yeah, he had been running a large, large consultancy uh, business for uh, a bit of from, from scratch. Very experienced guy. And um, that was super interesting and, and has helped us a lot. He's, he's part of the board still and um, he's, uh, yeah, he's very active in the, in the kind of the strategic part of the, the business. And we also hired a CEO. Uh, you know, do you remember Morten from Helsinki? Oh, it's Morten, yeah. 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 yeah, Helsinki, that reminds me of the, um, you know, when you try to pour in a, a wheat beer into a glass. That was fun. <laughs> 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 it didn't really work out i guess you can uh do uh, woocommerce websites better than pouring in a glass uh, beer in a glass oh uh, yeah <laughs> thank you for reminding me of that one yeah <laughs> it's uh i think it's been crucial for our success that we have been two and more it's kind of we have someone to share the victories and the failures and the frustrations with them and i think also with the 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 processes when you make decisions, it's uh, you always get a kind of a balance in the discussion. There's kind of a, in a group of people, there's always someone with a, or someone with, an, with a positive idea, and there's someone who's always negative. There has to be someone there who's negative. And if you are two or three or more, uh, that those roles are kind of distributed, no matter who is in the group. And I think that kind of uh, that kind of decision making processes are makes well-balanced decisions. We don't jump on every opportunity, but we jump on quite a few of them. And uh, it's always uh, thought through and, and discussed within the, with the partners. What I also think I've, we've seen, and I uh, think you might have seen the same, it's like for other agency owners who have been dominating or sole owners for the last 10 or 15 years in the same business, there are, after after time, they they grow tired, and they feel lonely, and I also think that the strategic decisions becomes harder and harder if you're alone over time. It gets you know like more difficult, and as you say, like it's always good to have a balance. Uh, you know, the good thing is also, um, as I said, everybody has their um, different spe specific field in our company that also brings in a different perspective. And uh, therefore, it's like, hey, great idea, but hey, wait a moment, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, is it is it safe? Is it uh, you know, like, um, are we not uh, hurting uh, this and this or, or whatsoever? Or is there too much risk? Or um, is this not? You know, we need to uh, figure out uh, other um, possibilities and you know, um, proof this on every perspective. You know, sometimes we have great ideas, you know, and then like, okay, it falls apart. Because we just didn't think about it, you know. There was so much enthusiasm in it, into it, and then somebody's like, "Wait a moment," you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, um, so it's very helpful, and it's also like you know, you put the burden not only on you if you like the only um, leader. Everybody's asking for uh, advices, decisions. Um, it puts a lot of pressure on you, and uh, as you said, like we have seen, you know, many people come and go. And also like, or also like they came back because they had a really bad time, uh, you know, for a, a certain a time range, but they all struggled somehow. Um, if they were there, you know, the lonely, um, warrior kind of, you know? and, uh, you either have to find, as I said in the beginning, find great people. Um, they do a greater job as you do on certain things and they can really support you. Or find a person um, you can trust and uh, can become your partner, you know. Um, but um, I don't want to miss uh, the three of them, you know. Uh, so uh, that is a great um, consolation what we have. And um, I can really recommend, uh, you know, to do it. 
but of course, you know, you need to trust this person, you know, hundred uh, percent, you know. Yeah. And also like one thing is don't try to see like, oh my gosh, I'm doing two hours more the week or 10 hours more the week. You know, it, it's not about the amount. It's about like, okay, how is the other person supporting the company and yourself and how you are working as a tech team and not about like, okay, who's working more or less. And I think this is as you need to keep the long-term glasses on. Oh yeah. If you think long-term, there's, there will be ups and downs for everyone. So including the partners. So yeah, definitely. Should we touch the next uh, subject on our list? That would be the Wu Expert program mm -hmm. or where we are considered to be the original gangsters, the OGs. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. How long have you been, uh, been in the program? Uh, I think from the very beginning when it started, you know, um, when it was, and also like, you know, of course, uh, it was really kind of wild west and uh, things need to be tried out and uh, things changed, especially in the beginning quite often, but uh, it's it's growing up, it's uh, getting more solid. But of course, you know, and, and it's good that, uh, you know, I guess like every uh, word camp we meet, uh, there are some updates or some uh, changes um, there to announce, but I think uh, it's it's a good good way to do it, um, but still, I think the you know um, best solution has to be found yet. Yeah, I I can agree on that. I was actually do you, do you remember Magnus Jepson, one of the founders of Wu? Yeah, He's, he lives uh, nearby me. Here. Uh, I think it was actually him who, who tipped me about the program. It was back in 2015. That's uh, yeah, eight years ago. And at that time, it was it was a paid placement to get listed in the kind of directory. I don't know how much uh, business or how many leads you've been given through the program, uh, at least the first five years or uh, or any. I mean, you do have to give uh, some leads here and there, but I I also think like they do understand. Um, it's not the amount of leads; it's like the quality of leads what you provide, and also like yeah what else you provide uh, besides like, just leads or new projects or anything like this is also like the know-how and uh, the solutions what we also provide and uh, show um, where we can, um, yeah, uh, you know, show um, everybody like um, what is the, and the possibility with WooCommerce, you know, and uh, enhance new levels and uh, heights. And, uh, you know, for example, with Molly, we, uh, in the summer, we got the innovator, award from uh, WooCommerce that was a really nice surprise uh, because you know we we have uh, great technical solutions and this is of course like a win-win situation as well for WooCommerce where they can show like hey this is possible with WooCommerce you know it's not like a small uh, e-commerce system um, you can just use for your uh, small backyard uh, shop or anything like this so um, I think they do understand on you know nowadays or um that uh, it's not about only leads it's also like on different levels like where um partners are important and where you can also be a, a gold platinum or a silver partner i think the main motivation for us the first years at least was the badge value we had a badge we could use that in our total marketing which was very helpful yeah yeah it was Def definitely on def differentiation in, in the local markets, at least. And um, I think for the US-based agencies, there has been quite a good lead flow all the years. Uh, I think almost, if we could take some of the other OGs in here, I think they would say that the, the lead flow to the US-based agencies has been has been good. But um, I think, as, as you said, I think it's also a matching the right agency with the right client might be hard. Because we are not very interested in having small clients or having standalone uh, one-off projects or just bug fixes or, or whatever. So, uh, so I think I think the way things are evolving now, where we are more engaged with the uh, with WooCommerce directly, I think that's the. I think it's a good direction it's it's taking now, and I also think that. Uh, I think. Paul Myrana and, and other guys in, in WooCommerce also see that the program has not been optimal. But I think I think the agencies are 
crucial for the merchants of a certain size. If you don't, yeah, we, you need to have a strong agency to build a good site. To, so it's, it's, there's a dependency here that we all, uh, we all need to be aware of. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is like, you know, a win-win situation for both. You know, like, uh, and it's also good that, you know, WooCommerce um, talks more to the agencies, like what is needed, what is the demand. And uh, I hope they will continue to do it and even more. Um, that they can, uh, you know, um, uh, collaborate and get more feedback from the agencies who also know, like, what the, um, you know, um, customer expects or demands, you know, uh, you cannot, you cannot do it only by, um, have some marketing talks with them or whatsoever. You really need to work with them hands on every day and see, like, okay, what is their expectation? What is their demand, uh, by a, solution and this is you know where we know this whole uh um yeah uh knowledge about it and uh, i think there's room to improve definitely um there are also like great people there um uh, like ross or, or uh, some others um really fun and really open to listen and um happy to see them every time when we meet at uh, word camps But, um, yeah, it's a learning phase. I mean, we are talking about, okay, eight years now, but eight years is not much, actually. You know, it is, uh, WooCommerce is still young. The industry is st still young, I would say. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of potential to learn more and uh, collaborate. But it's, it's important, and I think this is more visible for uh, WooCommerce, that the agencies are very important part of the whole um, structure and uh, not only like uh, the clients and the leads. Yeah, definitely. For the future of the Woo Expert program, what's on your wish list? Mm, to really separate maybe from like uh, senior experts to like uh, the big range um, who can, you know, create websites pretty good, but on a certain level. And also like uh, maybe, you know, developer certifications um, and, uh, you know, have also like more case studies to share, to bring up <clears throat> and um, also like on an enterprise level. I mean, we do see a lot of case studies of cool shops. They are really nice, but really like where we can see like, hey, they're like uh, 10, 10 orders per second or something like this, you know, those things. Uh, I mean, what enterprises capabilities do That also means like you can do it with mid-size or smaller shops, but the other way around, like what what you can do on small or uh, mid-size uh, shops, doesn't mean like you can do it um, on enterprise level. And we really need to show it that is possible. You know, the good and the bad thing of uh, WordPress, or also like WooCommerce, is like everybody can work with it, but I think only a few can really work uh, on an expert level, on a high level um, on it, and. Uh, Therefore, we need to show like it's, it really depends a lot of the expertise of the agency. And you really have to be careful who you pick, you know. And uh, this would be great if you can carve out this a little bit more, make it more visible. Um, so um, there's uh, more potential to gain those big clients in the future. Yeah, and I, I support all your... your uh bullet point here is like developer certifications definitely and and deeper case studies for the more relevant enterprise grade clients i've also there's something about the business models here that would be interesting to dive into to see how how can we help woocommerce grow the number of merchants in a even better way and how can how can we support each other also in, in the business models in a in a in a, in a better way it's like A new merchant for, for WooCommerce does not bring any any money to Woo to, to kind of build their product, to do their product development. But it's like, how how can we help them to monetize on, on, on basically on, on, on building Woo? We, we need to kind of figure out how these things uh, work out in a, in a dialogue, I think. And yeah, as you say, it's like, I don't necessarily think that the last 
changes where we kind of saw hundreds of U experts joining the program has been very good. Even though they're doing some kind of, uh, I don't know, the platinum, sunny gold, etc. There's some levels here and tiers, but like being able to compare agencies uh, and their expertise would be is, is important, I think. It's like comparing apples to apples is not very easy uh, for it, for the merchants to choose side agency. It is not very easy. That's true. I mean, <clears throat> we still need to find out like what is a you know sweet spot on it, and uh, as you said, like uh, onboarding more and more agencies, and then they get the certification. Like, hey, um, you know, we have the seal. Um, I don't know if it's always helpful, you know, because um, if the shop is failing. It's easy to blame the system and, of course, not saying like, hey, you know, as we as an agency, it was our fault because we didn't really set it up or the hosting. Sometimes it could be yeah. like the hosting. So um, it would be great if they can have a distinctive way like, okay, um, enterprise and, you know, small and mid-sized level. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if this is possible, but if if some, we, we do get a few projects now coming our way and it's like, It would also be interesting to have some kind of assessment from Wu as we go. It's like if we if we made a delivery, well, how happy is the client? How what's the quality of the project based on some certain metrics that has been defined as a like a criteria for quality for for a project? I don't know. Some some kind of uh, assessment and evaluation would be. I mean, if you talk about this kind of, I think you know, like being a normal agency just developing a website is not enough today. You have to, you know, take care of the client like a, it's a 360 customer service. You have to take care of all the aspects. What is, you know, uh, how is the website running, of course, like the speed. Is everything functional? Uh, but also like, uh, you know, um, how they market and, uh, you know, SEO stuff and so on and so on. And um, there are many things, um, you know, a customer also as expect sometimes. You know, but it's very easy, uh, important to um, not letting them alone and say like, hey, we did the development and now you can go further with something else or on your own or anything like this. This will certainly fail. And sometimes it's also falling back to you, even though it's actually not your fault. But you should really um, try to help them on uh, different aspects as well. Yeah. But isn't this a general uh, challenge, you think, to manage expectations? For the clients, of course, you know this is. I think this challenge will be always be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are both working in the agency space, and you're you've been. That's one of the the fun things meeting you uh, at Birdcamp. It's like, what's the size of your agency now? And I can go back like six months or three months and say, okay, you've added twenty people, thirty people. But how do you see your agency grow in the future? I think, you know, um, we grow more internally to, to be even more solid, um, to be more structured. Um, I think we're not, uh, you know, growing in, in numbers, but we're growing in more expertise and more like um, everybody has specific uh, responsibilities. Right now, we're also like very um, democratic. Many uh, different departments have their own uh, way to do things. And it's good, you know, of course, you know, we check out like is the quality good or whatever, but we still can uh, improve synergies and also like uh, have one uh, way to go with some parts. Um, and we also see people internally uh, growing to be, become um, seniors in uh, different ways. Not only developers, we all always have only senior developers, but also like uh, even more senior in uh, other directions, you know. Um, and uh, administration and leading teams and all this stuff. But also um, we had some new people joining us uh, with a lot of uh, senior experience, which is very, very helpful. But um, yeah, I think we grow internally, not by numbers, but we grow by uh, becoming even more structured, becoming more streamlined, um, um, you know, To the point, I would say, you know, like uh, that. This is the goal what we have, and this is also like where we see us uh, in the future. If we grow by numbers, I don't mind. Um, that could happen, of course. You know, um, <laughs> I did say that, uh, you know, five years ago when we were 30, you know, and uh, we did grow quite a lot. But I don't think that we will grow, uh, 
you know, grow uh, that uh, massively um, as we did before. But uh, steady and, uh, you know, that we also keep our quality. That's the most important thing. What about you? Yeah, what about us? I think we'll still grow by numbers quite a bit. At least that's my, my ambition. I think I think we see, for Maximer, we see, I see a few things. I see uh, growing within the markets we operate already. And then we're going to, mainly we'll be taking market shares as, as we do uh, today. But we will also grow on the professional services, the surrounding services, SEO, Analytics, CRO, and e-commerce managers will that part of it will will grow, um, and that's a way of growing the existing client base as well, and the revenue on the existing clients. And I think we also will kind of go a bit upstream, uh, meaning we'll be doing larger projects or larger clients with different demands. Um, that's kind of also, I guess you've seen the same as kind of a consequence of having a large organization is that you need to also have, uh, it, it costs more to start a project than it did 10 years ago, right? So you need to also have clients that are willing to pay for that. And equality demands follows that. And then we have the, the uh, other part where I think we will grow, uh, which is the new markets. We set up uh, offices in Sweden uh, last uh, two years ago, which has been a great, great success, I would say. Um, we did an attempt in the UK, which was not a very uh, great success, but uh, we've not given up that. We learned quite a lot from it. Uh, so what I think we'll, we'll be trying in new markets again, uh, mainly as geographically markets, if that means if we're going to set up an office in, in, in the UK again or in France or in Spain or I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But, but not in Germany, right? <laughs> <laughs> of course not Germany. <laughs> but, but, but the question is not, is not uh, the question is how to do it. And what I think is a next step in the agency space for from small to medium sized agencies is the con consolidations where we see mergers and acquisitions as part of part of that. And I'm quite uh, eager to explore that, that part, especially when we are looking at opportunities in, in new markets. I think that is a that is a way of um, getting faster up running uh, in new markets. And what we can do then is we can utilize the existing organization and the delivery teams and the models we, we have. And uh, yeah, so I'm quite interested in that. Sounds like a good plan. Would you say, um, you know, you had the experience in Sweden and you have the experience setting up uh, in England. Would you say it's a complete difference between the different countries? Also, like if you're planning to set up something in Spain or anything like this? Yeah, we, we, we did quite a lot of research uh, on one country in Europe, uh, which was quite interesting because they had a totally different... We also did quite a lot of research on UK before we started there. And uh, the research tells us that it's uh, very different uh, how the markets work based on which systems are in use, uh, how the... How big the the uh, how, uh, how major how the te technology ma how major technology stack is in the companies, and uh, yeah, so it, I think it's uh, I think it is quite different from country to country, kind of in the in the global space where you where we get a, a project in Australia or we get a project in in somewhere it's like the remote handling projects is different than if you're working in the local market. Definitely. What about the U.S.? Yeah, what about the U.S.? I think uh, the U.S. is super interesting. Um, uh, yeah, but I don't think we're going to set up something on our own. Are we going to do something in the U.S.? It needs to be through some kind of uh, partnership or consolidation with someone else. Mm, yeah, it's a different field, completely different. It is. But I would say like, uh, you know, the other way around, from the U.S. to Europe, it's even more difficult. With all the restriction and all the stuff. Yeah. Painful. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, it's, it's, it's also challenges working from, from Europe within the US as well. It's like we, we had a meeting with a US-based company earlier today uh, that we're going to do a project within the health sector. And it's, 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 kinda, it's quite different than how we uh, work with our 
project today when it comes to accessing data uh, and how the routines are for for um, IT security around it. But it's, uh, but this is a, a large large uh, company, so it's uh, but I think it's super super interesting and we learn things every every day. So, but you could kind of just can add to it. It's like if there are any agency owners out there who would like to have a talk uh, in some market, please uh, reach out and we can see if we find any opportunities together. Here we go. Maybe this is the start of a new adventure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. There are merger going on. I mean, uh, recently, uh, TenUp uh, also merged together. Yeah. Um, which I think it's a smart move. And it's a technical move, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes there. Yeah, we'll see how it goes there. So I think we are getting close to a time limit uh, now. I think so too. Yeah, I hope we didn't bore anyone and uh, <laughs> it was too long or anything like this, or people fell fell asleep. So um, yeah, what is left? I have at least created uh, three tips. I would, uh, if I was asked for, um, for what, if, if I would do something again uh, or different, uh, what would I uh, do as an agency owner or starting an agency or, or scaling an agency? So it's, I think the tips number one for me is to think long term. It's like if you lose a project today, what we see is that three years later, that client comes back to you. Stick to your story and, 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 and think long term. The, the the clients you lose today will come back if the story is is right and you're honest with them. And I think uh, get a partner, work together with uh, someone you trust. That is uh, number two for me. Yeah, keep stick to the story. It's kind of the same as as number one, but it's stick to your story. It's like believe in what you do and um, make sure you also make money as you go. Yeah, um, yeah. What are my three tips? Um, I would say treat your people right, respect and appreciate them. They are the most precious asset what you have. And uh, second, I would say listen to the OGs. The WordPress community is very helpful. I mean, I always see people are very open with their uh, secret sauce or um, techniques or um, how they um, solve things or how they are, con you know, have their structure and all this stuff. So you can be sure that people helping there, it's a very helpful community and uh, they don't mind to tell you like, okay, how did they accomplish things and uh, what kind of failures they did? You don't have to do it. So listen to them, you know, um, listen to, to people. They have experience uh, if you want to start um, with your own business. And of course, you know, build also like a strong relationship with your clients. You know, um, this is also very important. Be, um, have a sustainable relationship, not, you know, um, doing a website, cash in the money and, um, the result is not great and the person is not happy, but you are like, okay, I got the money and I'm fine with it. Build up a sustainable relationship over years and, um, show them that you're the reliable partner and, uh, You know, but also like show them like, hey, they not depend on you. You know, this is also very important. But they really happy to be with you. you know? Word of mouth, you will also get some other clients as well. You know, if they're happy with you, they will tell others. So they also do networking. They also have conferences. They do. All right. So I think uh, we should add uh, kind of a contact section in the end. So how can uh, anyone reach you, Alex, if they would like to? Get in touch. They can reach us um, on uh, at insight.com uh, on the contact form or whatsoever and uh, just say like, hey, I would like to have an answer from Alex and you certainly get it from me. I don't want to say my uh, email address here. <laughs> Could be a little bit uh, too much. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, you can always approach us or also like on, um, you know, on Slack channels, on several. I'm also there. Um, you can find me on the WooCommerce Slack channel, uh, the public one, or also like WordPress. So I'm I'm approachable, um, and uh, I'm very happy to, you know, answer your question. Or if you also would like to apply at the M site, we're always looking for great, um, you know, developers. Um, and yeah, looking forward to meet you, if you like. Thank you. 
yeah, you can reach, you can find my contact details at maximera.com. That is M A K S I M E R.com. And you will also probably find me at the World Camp in a bar nearby Alex. He's the guy in the green shirt. Look for the green shirt. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I hope it was a good time for you. And we had a pleasure. It was great talking to you, Niels. And uh, yeah, looking forward to meet you soon again. Likewise. Have a good one. Bye. Hey, Bob WP here. And there was a lot in this one. But I did enjoy how so many of their successes stemmed from finding trusted partners and building strong relationships with their clients. So I want to thank Alex and Nils for taking the time to share their agency experiences. I'd also like to thank GoDaddy, one of our current and longest supporters of Do The Woo. Please check them out at GoDaddy.com. So until the next time, cheers from the Do The Woo team.